the uncackables. <laughs> we have actually had coughing in this studio last week on episode of Wilms Front where, oops, sorry, got to get out of this. We're showing the 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 number one hate symbol there. <laughs> We're all dying. Mm. <laughs> But welcome to good. the Uncuckables for another week. <laughs> oh yes, 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 the, yes. the <laughs> one finger salute, which if you just saw that, that image there, I'll put, I'll put it back up there. This is, uh, in case you don't know who, uh, oh, that's not it. No, I haven't got it here. I will bring it up. Anyway, it's 8.45 p.m. Melbourne time. We're 15 minutes late because we're trying to fit everyone into this studio because it's myself, Tim Williams, editor of The Unshackled. I'm joined in the studio, as always, by David Hiscock, editor of The XYZ. And Thanks joining for me, me too. on the, the left-hand side uh, is Harry Richardson, editor of the now Richardson Post, That's formerly correct. Pickering Post. Yes. So you're in Melbourne uh, for the rest of this week and can join us here in the studio. Thank you, Tim. Mm. Good to be here. And we've got, yeah, in the mask there remotely, uh, James Fox Higgins, director of Rational Rise TV. No one took any notice of me till I put on the mask. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Bane mask. Right? Yeah. All right, that'll do. I can't breathe. Shit. <laughs> 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 Top, of Top of the evening, evening to you, fellas, fellas and uh, everyone, everyone at home watching. watching. That was a very Irish thing to say. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just impressed with the Bane impersonation. Yeah. That's magnificent. Yeah, here we go here. This is, uh, <laughs> this this is just, <laughs> just broken today uh, because remember we had the ASIO National Threat, threat Assessment mm -hmm. on Tuesday by the, the new ASIO uh, Director General, Mike Burgess, call him Burjo. Hi Burjo, if you're watching. Hi, of course Burjo's watching. Hi Burjo. <laughs> I mm. mm. And uh, of course, I'll, I'll, br I'll bring it up here. This is the other thing. I've got so many different <laughs> screens to, to manage here. This was the headline by the, the, the ABC here. Uh, Neo-Nazis among Austra uh, Australia's most challenging security threats, AGO boss Mike Burgess warns. Where are these guys? You know, I keep hearing about these Neo-Nazis. <laughs> Well, he said, he, yeah, he was very specific and he said that people who get together to salute Nazi flags in the <laughs> suburbs, mm -hmm. I don't know anyone like that. <laughs> what was, what I found interesting about that article, like they had the Schwarz sticker on the front and they had, uh, you know, like Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. But then like most of the article was actually about Islamic extreme, uh, Islamic terrorists and Chinese, uh, Chinese spies. And like, every, <laughs> like they'd be talking like... Like you go through the article, like it's talking like about Islamic uh, terrorists, and then they just chuck in some random thing about the right wing guys. And then put a big a big picture at the front of the article with a burning Nazi cross. Yeah, mm. yeah. There's, yeah. There's loads of those around. Where, where yeah. is it? Where is that? Where does it say that? It's it's from there. It says Reuters, go Nakamura. Yeah. That's okay. What it says. So do we even know if that picture is from Australia? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. He says yeah. the United States isn't alone in the rise of white nationalism, so I'm guessing that means yeah. that the picture's taken. Yeah, I'd United say that picture's States. probably from Photoshop. Uh, maybe, apparently maybe, there's maybe it's from here as well, Tim. Uh, the boomer tech is letting us down again. My, oh. my Nazi-ness is showing or something. <laughs> oh, because, yeah, we've got three of us here, so we've only got two sets of headphones and two microphones, so that's probably the other set of headphones here. Is there a way that we can do it where... How's that for everyone? We need to quarantine our ears. Mm. I was going to say, maybe that photo was from Burning Man, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got the kind of look about it. Mm. Yeah. Well, it had an immediate... It's, it's, it's uh, a, different, a different festival called Burning Manfred. Mm. <laughs> It had an immediate knock-on effect at this. Well, they, 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 they took out uh, the, the news media and the, the ABC in particular, the, the, the rising threat from neo-Nazis and white supremacists. And then the next day, uh, Daniel Andrews announced that 
he's uh, he's, he's going to making sh making sure that all Victorian school children know about the the Holocaust to mm. uh, combat anti-Semitism. Mm. I learned about the Holocaust at school. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah um, I learned about it from my mother. To yeah. be honest. <laughs> Our, our education system is basically now it's, it's butt sex and viral porn and Holocaust studies. That's, that's basically all they, all they do. And I guarantee you the, uh, the Holocaust studies will begin with screenings of uh, Schindler's List because, you know, it, isn't that a historically accurate uh, way to introduce people to yeah. World War II history? Yeah. Spielberg what about lessons back. about the, the Holodomor? What's that? Holodomor. What's that? No, no, nobody knows about the Holodomor. What's a Holodomor? <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> Seven million Iranian, uh, uh, Ukrainians yeah. starved. Yeah. And yeah. Joe Biden wasn't even that. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, because he just invented, what is it, a genocide uh, in, the, in the debate. What did he say? 150 million Americans killed by gun violence? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he yeah, said that. the population. It's a, it's a random figure there. Yeah. <laughs> According to Joe down the pub. Mm. Now we are on Entropy. I haven't got a video playback uh, working on it, but you can ask us all a question here and you can send us through a uh, super chat. So I'll just put it through in the, the, the live chat. Is, is James still uh, echoing? Turn down your iPad. No, it's not the Am I the echoing? It's because it's, it's of the headphones. Oh, okay, okay. Because we're sharing headphones. Yep. Let us know about the echo. That's, that's, how, that's how the pandemic begins, boys. Yeah, shut mm. headphones, I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably the, the, uh, the hy hypochondriacs who think that you can get it through through your ears. Mm. It but is yes. an orifice. Mm. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yes, going back to this photo here, the 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 America Fest, because of course there's the the OK sign that is the the, the the uh, anti defamation league as Dean Matter hate symbol. <laughs> that, wow! And then there's the the two that's two genders that's that's hate speech <laughs> that's binary. <laughs> and then and, and, and mm. this is the new one. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you? <laughs> <laughs> Nazi, hey, mate, Nazi, Nazi babies. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, J uh, James, uh, uh, in the interest of diversity, I'll just make this whole really. <laughs> <laughs> so, therefore, oh, countering your hate, some love speech. Well, thank, thank, thanks for uh, going even lower than I went then. Mm. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> Yeah, but that, that's that's absolutely the symbol for um, uh, white procreation now. Mm, absolutely, Two hate yes. symbols yes. come together and yeah. make babies, yeah. 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 yeah, and now the, the, the one, that symbol is country first. I love that. I love how we've basically done some cultural appropriation of ISIS. It's great. <laughs> yeah. In the same week that the ASIO delivered its <laughs> national assessment. Yeah, well, that it, that is kind of funny because about, again, about that assessment, like they're trying to lump... Um, Islamic terrorists and people who want their country back and Chinese spies all in, all in the same basket as they were all part of like this extremist ideology and we all share the same ideology. Um, they ignore the fact that um, people like us who just want our country back, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing if it wasn't because our countries have been flooded with illegal immigrants in the first place and Islamic terrorism in the first place. Not even the illegal immigrants, but um, yeah, absolutely. Speak up, Harry. You're the, you, <laughs> am I, you, I'm you, not speaking loud enough. No. Yeah. Okay, I'll speak louder. In, in um, funnily enough, I I knew someone. I don't want to really name names or events here, but somebody who organised an event in Melbourne, and it was a big event, and it was targeted. It was what people would class as a right wing person these days, but we, we, I, I didn't think they were particularly controversial. But there was there was um, a large uh, Antifa thing that they were you know, Antifa were going to turn up and smash everything about. Mm. So the person that I knew that was organising it had to sit down um, on numerous occasions with the Victorian police, and the Victorian police told him that they had a that they they had four groups that they were afraid of, and in in list of the from the most afraid down to the least afraid, the first the the one that the the, the group that they were most afraid of was the left-wing um, radicals like mm. Antifa and mm. you know, whoever, you know, social justice, yeah, what are they called? The social... 
Social justice warriors. Not yeah, but the the socialist workers party and oh, those, oh, you know, the snowflakes uh, kind of uh, <laughs> social, oh, socialist alternative. Yeah, socialist alternative. Yeah, socialist alternative. Yeah, they're those the, kind of they're people. basically the most violent. N number number left two. Number two was the That's jihadists. Right. Yeah. So they actually came in behind the the left wing nut jobs. Yes. I can't remember who was three, and number four was right wing, um, crazies. Okay. Which. I don't yeah. know. Well, they I mean, you know, maybe just they, they just threw them in, the, huh? Yeah, just the guys that you know when Egg Boy threw a, a, an egg at um, Senator Fraser Anning and and um, was crash tackled by was it Neil Erickson or someone? Yeah, so. yeah they always Ricky, so Ricky, was, Ricky Turner yeah. as well. There were yeah. other people there, so, but yeah. that's just the the, the 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 famous people. Good evening, the, Neil. He's here in the see. chats as well. <laughs> mm. So I think that, that was why they they're, they're thrown in there. But I'm, mm. I'm not sure. I, I've never I've never really heard of right wing people doing anything that bad in australia well, they, they, they 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 really don't like uh, there, well, there was somebody they, who was arrested for stuff that he said on yeah, the internet like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, not, not, talking, not yeah. talking about what people say i mean i'm talking about how many right wing people have actually done things i remember when i was first here and and i might even have been living in australia in melbourne at that time um there was a guy who was like a neo-nazi in, in perth I think there might have been two of them and they bashed up an asian taxi driver this was years ago. Yeah, it's before way our time. Way, Does way, anyone yeah, in yeah. the chat, have they ever heard of that story? That, that would have been me, 25, 30 years yeah. ago. Yeah, that was, what is it, the original Romper Stomper. Yeah, that, that was, yeah. Um, other than that, I haven't really heard of people who've actually, you know, gone out as Nazis and bashed, you know, hmm. migrants or whatever. Hmm. Like, it's, hmm. yeah. If you've actually seen, because the original Romper Stomper movie with Russell Crowe, where hmm. they're, they're beating up all mm, the, the gooks. Viet yeah, Vietnamese who are opening up all those restaurants. Mm. Okay. Uh, and, it's, and it's just like, it's so ridiculous, the like, senseless violence. And then all the Vietnamese, they, they, they all team up with like, they get all these makeshift um, weapons and chase them around foot scraying and that. It's just, and what ha, has things. that actually ever happened? Well, it was, it was Russell Crowe's character, <laughs> Hander, yeah. was based on yeah. an actual white supremacist who was serving a life sentence for some, I can't remember if it was actual murder or, or something else, but that's how the original uh, director a writer director based it on and then uh the the one 25 years later the the romper on the tv series mm. uh, based on the the next generation of uh patriots except next uh, generation yeah, yeah <laughs> except a uh, spoiler alert uh, at the end um uh, there, there's definitely not been a a patriot who's had a suicide vest and blown up a a, a, a yacht shed <laughs> Is that actually what happened? That's how, that's what happened. Oh my in goodness. The end. This, this is the crazy thing. Basically, guys who get <laughs> red pilled, this is what happens. You spend a year or maybe two years just having your mind absolutely blown. <laughs> and if you make the mistake of doing it on Facebook or on your own blog, <laughs> you get a bit of attention and, you know, you, like you have to write out a little bit of a storm. After that, you settle down and you go, okay, um, <laughs> I understand that like the entire system that I'm living in is based on a lie um, and my government is trying to kill me and my people. What am I going to do about it? Um, okay, I'm going to get fit. I'm going to make connections with other people who understand this and build up communities which are independent of what our government is trying to make us do. And we're just going to start our own community. And that's what right-wing extremists do that's as extreme as it gets we're like i'm gonna have 17 children that's as extreme as it gets yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, kathy club was right wing extremist that's not on 13, bro. what's uh, that uh, 13 children the herald sun described kathy club as a a right-wing extremist because she had so many white babies yeah yeah, yeah that's that's it that, that, that's all we want to do we just want to be well, left alone. Well, they're now calling, yeah. like, you know, that um, Sunrise or whatever bullshit TV program it was that recently, you know, ridiculed that um, that lady in Brisbane. Uh, today, was, today uh, show, that talk, was... Today, oh, right, yeah, you know, like, is, they're, uh, they're making out that being a, being a happy trad wife uh, is some kind of extremism or that she must be under hypnosis. And it's like, they're, they're so out of touch with Logos and with, with God's intended natural order for the world. They're so out of touch with the things that genuinely bring happiness and love into the world that they ridicule goodness you know it's like this these are the dark times that we live in where you know as as uh as jesus put it you know 
woe unto them who call good evil and evil good. And this is what they do. Inversion. Uh, yeah. yeah, the satanic inversion. It's crazy. Hmm. Uh, Dia just complained about the echo. <laughs> she, she knows. <laughs> It's it's because I'm a shill for Israel. That's what it is. That's what the echo is. <laughs> so I was going to say, was that the um, the thing? Did you see the the way of the world? You ever watch Way of the World? Yeah. He did a, a video on that. I think that was the one you were talking about. It was a Brisbane Channel Seven. Ah yes. So uh, where they they started talking mm. about the, a woman who was getting up at four thirty to make sandwiches for the kids and yeah. get the husband. What a psychopath! Out. Yeah, crazy. Um, <laughs> which, <laughs> Who would do that? Yeah, I wish I could find a woman, a wife like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, have you have you seen the the Stepford Wives, the the remake one, not yes. the original, where the the husbands implant chips in their wife's oh. heads to turn them into trad wives? I haven't seen it all the way through to the end, but I know the plot of it. Yeah, mm. yeah. I saw the original. I, I, I it, highly, but... highly, highly recommend that everyone um, watch uh, the Black Pill. Uh, channel Devin Stack's yeah. channel and check out his analysis of the original Stepford Wives movie. Uh, if you haven't seen Devin Stack's work, you absolutely need to check it out. He does brilliant blow by blow analyses of um, of films, particularly classic films. And his Stepford Wives one was was unbelievable. I showed it to my wife, and she was just like, oh, like yeah, this is where the programming began. This is where um, they used Hollywood to make women believe that they were oppressed that whole that whole madman narrative of the oppression of women is an invention you know it really wasn't like that uh, but it's been it's been it's like inception you know it's been put into the heads of women and then the next generation learn it as though it's historical fact like the like the bullshit they put in uh schindler's list you know we we get shown this as kids and told this is historical fact and then when you start to actually look into more reliable uh, and alternative sources of history and start to see what really went on or didn't go on, then you're suddenly an extremist because you're going off the plantation, you're going off the uh, the narrative that they've fed you. So yeah, we're, we're in a highly, highly programmed society and it's uh, it's not okay to take red pills. <laughs> uh, I've watched a bit of Mad Men and yeah, John Draper gets up, it's, what is it? Uh, sh she runs some other uh, like retail store and Don Draper's like, I will not let myself uh, be spoken uh, to by, uh, by a woman like that. And then there's another scene where his boss hits on his, his wife, Betty, and then blames her. Mm. I get the impression f that Mad Men is a, a, a far leftist's imagination of what the 50s was like. <laughs> Um, like I, I hear about what the fifties was like and you know, like you had, um, blokes going to work, coming home, uh, to their wives and kids and you know, like the wives, like they had their own community, like not only did they look after like their houses, but they had a whole community and a whole network of people who look, they looked after themselves. They looked after the kids. Um, and be because like you didn't have women being forced into the workforce, um, you had affordable houses, you had affordable cars. Um, Australia was a great place. We, we basically had this paradise and we've mm. thrown it away. And now they have to convince us that the, that the 1950s was absolutely awful. <laughs> because if, if they don't, we will t people like normies will wake up and go, w what have they done to us? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They, they have I, to convince us that it was awful. Yeah. Drip Cake in the comments has a, an excellent um, uh, solution. He says, marry a trad and a feminist in Utah and then send the feminist to work in the salt mine and stay home with your trad. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Muslims are on to something. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're all going to be Mormons now. It's excellent. It's okay <laughs> to be polygamous, yeah? <laughs> well, yeah. they've actually, what is it, in Utah, I think they actually, did they... They've, I think they've legalized it. Yeah, yeah. formally legalized yeah. it. Have they? Yeah. Yes. Polygamy, really? Yeah. Like the, uh, what, the degeneracy what they continues. Leave, like? <laughs> is, is there anything that's off limits? You just oh no, no not for long, not, yeah. not for long. Well, red yeah. pills, red pills, and uh, yeah. and you know discussing historical facts over uh, the propaganda. That's that's still yeah. illegal, and we're still the bad guys. You know. Well, you know how everyone was outraged that Bettina Arndt uh, became a a member of the the Order of Australia because yes. of her men men's rights activism, but. Nobody really, well, except for people like me and, and pro-life 
for pro-life activists, uh, uh, we spoke out when uh, Peter Singer, or Professor Peter Singer, was uh, uh, made a Companion of the Order of Australia. He's the ethics uh, philosopher who thinks it's okay to, to kill mm. uh, newborns, the disabled, the elderly, and to have uh, humans to have sex with animals. Yeah. But he's left wing, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. So that's okay. Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, when Cory Bernardi <laughs> made his uh, comments in the Senate, there's even creepy people out there who say it's okay for humans to have consensual sex between humans and animals. And they all had a go at him for that. It's like, <laughs> I read that in Peter Singer's work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's the usual thing, you know, it's okay. It's okay if they say it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of, going back to the, the, um, the Stepford wife things. I liked Jordan Peterson's approach when he he goes head to head with the the feminists and he points out that um, like the, the feminist narrative is that women have been oppressed by men all through the centuries. You know that this oppression has been going on. That we men have been having this wonderful time stomping on their women. And he points out that hang on a sec, men and women have, have had to cooperate. I mean, life's pretty tough. And when you raising kids, I don't know if you guys have, have got as far as raising kids yeah but it's a it's, it's a tough thing to do and yet and, and men and women have to actually cooperate together to do that you know and you, you see women who go off you know like the, the big feminist thing is we don't need husbands we can raise kids on our own well yes you kind of can but hell it's it's a real tough job most of throughout most of history men and women have cooperated together to raise children that's what they've got come together for mm. they, they haven't been you know, of course there's conflicts like there is with, between men and men and women and women but the, this idea that men have simply been oppressing women and sitting back in the chair, drinking the beer while the woman runs around and does all the housework and brings up the kids, is just a fantasy, you know? I mean, it is, but it's a, it's a fantasy that they've really installed um, quite severely in the minds of, of young women. I've, I've been, I'm about halfway through um, reading The Madness of Crowds by Douglas Murray, it's his latest book. Um, and, um, yeah, really, really fascinating stuff. And he gives some uh, large blocks of, you know, quotations from some of the texts from some of the leading academic feminists hmm. who just make up complete bullshit about history and about, um, you know, these these sort of um, uh, female-led matriarchal societies of the past that were perfect and harmonious, but then <laughs> the men figured out that they could use their muscles to get power, and then women have just been violently oppressed ever since, and it wasn't until the suffragettes um, that, you know, things started to finally... Ch like, just just utter nonsense when you just consider, as, as you're pointing out, you know, just logically there, it's like, you can't actually build a civilization without cooperation between the sexes. And... <clears throat> What feminists have managed to do is um, conflate the distribution of labor um, between men and women based on our varied talents. Men and women are not the same, fact. We have different propensities and different talents, fact. And we actually need each other to survive and build a civilization. But now they're trying to tell us, no, um, men and women are exactly the same. There's no difference. And in fact, now there's 49 or 72 or 184 genders. It's all a spectrum. It's all about how you feel on the day, but there's no difference. We're all the same, but we're all unique. Like this, it's, it's a form of like this kind of radical leftist intersection or feminism is a form of mental retardation. Yeah. We're, it's all, a mental we're, all exactly, virus. we're all exactly the same, but men are much worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking uh, on Worms Front last night with Carolee Smith, who's the director of Binary oh, yeah. Australia, yeah, yeah, yeah. which, as the name suggests, it's it's basically reaffirming what is biology and science, that there's, there's two genders. Gender is binary. And we mentioned throughout the show that uh, the, the left has become extremely confused about uh, gender and... You mean sex. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah sex. But... It's reminded me that uh, Daniel Andrews has passed Australia's first gender equality bill, uh, which basically uh, compels public sector uh, and local council uh, employers to uh, make gender reporting to make sure that they have uh, mm. equal e equal amount of men and women in the, the workplace. And yeah. as it's been pointed out, uh, it's binary. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's, um, Daniel Andrews yeah. is just that ain't work enough. 
the, yeah. the, the birth certificate amendment where you can change your birth certificate every six months to yeah. uh, male, female or whatever else, as long as it's not obscene. It, it's amazing how fast the Victorian government is pumping out these social justice, le- this social justice legislation. It seems every other week mm. they've got a new little bit of legislation saying you have to do this, you have to do that. Mm. And I love um, that. I love that they make it. You can change it uh, as often as you want, as long as it's not to something obscene. Well, who decides what's obscene? I find it obscene that you can change your gender at all. God <laughs> finds it obscene. You know, it is obscene. You're male or female. If you've got identity issues that's a problem in you it's not a problem with society you know it's it's so it's we're we're in clown world it's it's absolutely nuts it's, i i worked um for many years as a, as a welder okay as a boiler maker welder pipe fitter pipe pipe welder um and it's a pretty tough industry you know it's, it's i wouldn't recommend it as a job to most people i i i'm not, I'm not complaining i enjoyed I, the trade was quite good to me it was a pretty tough trade but i i, I like to change my job so I don't like staying in the same place for long. I used to um, do short, um, short jobs where there's, you know, you would work really hard. You maybe do a shutdown where you're doing se- seven days a week, uh, 12 hours a day. Sometimes for maybe six weeks, you earn a stack of money, you take a few weeks off, you go and do another one, um, to go to another job. So I went from job to job. So I, I worked with literally thousands of, of welders and boilermakers through, throughout my, my lifetime. I never, ever met a single female welder or boilermaker not one I, I did hear of people who uh, some I, I, a, a couple of times i met people who'd met a girl who was a welder or a boiler maker would they would they would they tell the story like a, with a wistful look in their <laughs> eye <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah so, so legend like, has it so as far as as far as gender equality went in welding um like I don't know whether it was the patriarchy that was just filtering this through and making sure no women went in. I, I, I suspect it might have been that if you ever seen a girl in a pair of overalls, it always makes their bum look big. <laughs> but that, that might have been one of the things that, that put them off. But it, it's just, it's not the kind of trade that any girl would ever want to do. I mean, it's just not. You know, I mean, you, you, you're there under some pipe in some snotty oil refinery at night in the mud lying on your back with with molten metal sparks falling down and going down your your, your boiler suit and ended up i won't even tell you where they can end up <laughs> um it's just yeah. not the yeah. kind of thing that girls would want to do you know yeah. it's, it's, it's a and this this is the this is the maneuver with the um the affirmative action hiring yeah. the uh, the quote the gender quotas it's about uh the feminists wanting to nag their way into equal representation in all of the comfortable fields with all of the perks and all the benefits and all the money and the easy office jobs. Um, but if women were left to make their own choices freely, they, they wouldn't choose those jobs. No, and they're, they're not going to be agitating for equal representation there either. And nor no, should they. Absolutely. Like, I never heard any, any any feminist group protesting with placards saying, let us in, we want to be boilermakers. Yeah, yeah. So mm. yeah, it was, yeah. You're exactly well, right. Well, the feminarchy is, is only going to be a, a blip in history. It's not going to last forever. Yeah. And, and this, mm. this equality movement, even even down to uh, the uh, women having the, the right to vote, is not going to last forever. Mm. And yeah, but the scary sure. thing is, like, when it disappears, is, that, is it going to disappear on its own or is it going to take the whole society down with us yes. and be replaced with something more more sustainable? probably a lot less pleasant oh, it's already on fire mm. yeah. so here it's already on fire and it's, that's, yeah, it's, that's it's going to be a bloody affair there's no doubt yeah. about it when we look at the cycle of history um that's what happens like yes you, you know when you were talking earlier about how like the feminists love to talk about you know those times that uh women were actually in charge or had more power um it it does it has happened quite on a regular occurrence throughout history. It always happens towards the end of the civilizational cycle. Cle- towards Cleopatra the, would be a good example. Absolutely. Towards the end of that 250 year cycle, that's when um, you have basically have the breakdown of morals, the breakdown of the family. Um, people stop having children um, and women get more power. It's, it's it, like uh, if you look up, I think it's John Glubb, yeah. his, his essay um, on the cycle of civilization. Um, that, or the decline. Of, I can't remember the, the actual name of it, but John Glubb, look him up. Uh, G L U double B, um, and it's it yeah. just it, history just repeats again and again and again. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the paradigm that, that a lot of these uh, historical revisionists in the feminist world are missing is that it is cyclic. History is cyclic, and civilization is cyclic. You know, rather yes. than this linear progress that they think we're moving along, where they think somehow just because we've got smartphones that we're smarter, <laughs> when in fact it's quite the opposite. Somehow, just because we've got, um, you know, international flights, 
we're somehow a stronger and more resilient species than we were a thousand or two thousand or five thousand years ago. It's nonsense. Yeah. And, and these, so you know, all of all of this modernity is going to collapse. Social media is actually, as many people have said, is anti-social media. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what were our Andrews... topics tonight again, Tim? Yeah. Well, I'm going to stay on uh, Daniel Andrews uh, now because you you said uh, uh, he has basically a, a new a, a new social engineering thing every week. Yes. Uh, but uh, what he also announced uh, this week is you know how we have two two bins. Uh -huh. We have the the household waste yes. and uh, the recycle one, and uh, now we've got. Uh, four bins now. The, oh the rainbow oh, bins. Goodness. Yes. <laughs> oh. This is the, the UK has this already. Yeah. They, they, they've had this for a few years. Oh, is that the, is that your purple one for sharps? Oh. <laughs> yes, it's for glass. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, and syringes. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. the green one is for food and organics, and the uh, yellow one is for paper, plastic, and metals. And uh, the the red one is for for household waste. Why are they mixing up the the paper and and plastic? They, they That's a really good point. Yeah, we need they, more bins. Yeah, need more bins. We need more bins. Yeah. And how long until they introduce like a, a pink one to? Put yeah, yeah. They like they in. haven't completed the rainbow there. They need a few more bins <laughs> to complete the rainbow. Yeah, just just you know they'll 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 give you a pink bin and a DIY home abortion kit and just you know yeah. you figure There's it no, out. It's okay. Organic after the tissue goes in the pink one. After the fall, we'll only need one bin for the ashes. Mm. <laughs> uh, some, some, uh, I won't read that. There's some good suggestions in the comments for what should go in the other colored bins. <laughs> <laughs> Just use, yeah. your, use your imagination. Maybe, maybe we could have an entropy poll on that. Yeah. <laughs> but there, there's no blue bin for, well, maybe because blue is the color of men. <laughs> Soon enough, eh? Hey? Mm. Yeah. But there's no pink. But men one don't as well. exist. <laughs> I'm so uh, damn we confused. Al <laughs> we also had the uh, because it's we had Daniel Andrews. Was it last weekend? He he posted him and his family eating Chinese food to to show solidarity. Oh, I can we to that? I think we talked about this last week. Yes, that, yes. Uh, we've been told to Gary Hardgrave, who's a Sky News host and former Howard government minister, he said it's your civic duty to, to go out and have Chinese food. On Sky News? Yes. <laughs> that that after, racist, after dark, after racist dark. far right network yes. Sky News, they said that. Yes. Wow. How, how long until it's a, a mandated, you know, enforced uh, government policy to go mm. out and have Chinese food? Yeah. Eat the... Eat the Chinese! <laughs> yeah. Eat the eat Chinese food. Eat the bats you're a racist! Yeah. <laughs> eat the, eat the, Uber, the bat Uber chicken. Eats will be pulling up outside your house and pushing them through your letterbox, maybe. <laughs> Uh, China, I, I yeah. saw a report now uh, that the, the Chinese government have officially banned its citizens from eating dogs. <laughs> Not bats, though. <laughs> oh, well, they, they made that TV host apologize for eating a bat. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was actually in... It, it wasn't in China, it was somewhere else where she ate the bat, but it was okay. beamed into China. Okay. So she was clearly saying, even though she wasn't in China at the time, that this was a good idea to eat a bat. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, because I listened well, to Well, it was obviously a, it was obviously a joke because the bat was whole and not even skinned or anything, and she didn't actually eat it. It was just mm. like it was a it was a prank, right? Uh, I, told, I told you the story a few weeks uh, back about yeah, Ozzy Osbourne when he uh, bit the head off the bat. Stage, I yeah. had to, what is it? Rabies quarantine for thirty days. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. What him or the bat? Yeah. <laughs> but if you look at Ozzy Osbourne now, was it the drugs or the bat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, Ozzy, Ozzy back then wasn't that much better, to be honest with you. Well, he's yeah, definitely yeah. gotten worse even think he, since he, the Osbournes. He blew up a goat on stage when he, in the 70s. Like, <laughs> he, yeah, he was pretty much out there. Yeah. So uh, vegans don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. There, there was no such thing in the 70s, so mm. yeah, it wasn't an issue yeah. then. Well, okay, there won't be a, such thing yeah. for much longer because they're not very uh, robust. <laughs> yeah, they get the clammy skin. Yeah. Uh, but the the health uh, Victor, uh, Dan Andrews' health minister Jenny McKeos, she uh, because there's been reports now that uh, uh, people who have taken their children to the Royal Children's Hospital don't want them treated by Asian doctors because mm -hmm. they're scared of the coronavirus. <laughs> And so she said that this is not an excuse to be racist. They, they, they like. It, it seems that 
the their fear of the coronavirus that evaporates when they like to call us racist all of these left-wing people yeah i can just see it in about oh. um six months time you're gonna have like fields of crosses like with the inscription at least i wasn't racist <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah it, yeah well, it, it, yeah, it, it exactly. is what it is what i love about coronavirus because um uh, one of the things i talk about the way that like i try to present um the news on xyz um and i think about it when I, like especially when i'm writing but also like w when i'm sort of talking as well i like the idea that like you can get ideas across to people uh, that just change your brain like that um or like over time they might change your brain but sometimes something just changes your brain like that um and so uh, we've got this um level of fear in society where people uh, virtue signal because they're afraid of being called a bigot or racist and virtue signaling is basically slow motion suicide virtue uh, virtue signaling means that your children or your grandchildren are going to be the only white kids in the schoolyard in 20 or 30 years time um, but coronavirus means that your children could die right now <laughs> So all of a sudden, virtue signaling goes out the window and all of a sudden, um, your reptile brain kicks in and it's like, I want to survive and I don't care what these people say about me. So there's nothing that the authorities can do to stop us from being racist because it's about survival right now. And what I also love, like, because, you know, uh, it, it's quite possible that like the coronavirus still may not be quite as bad as what we're saying um but it's the shutdown to the economies that will actually cause a lot of the damage um so you've seen over in china how they're um shutting up all the like they're putting gravel in front of all the doors of apartment buildings and like there's footage of like two chinese guys playing badminton over the back fence um in china like you've got a um society that's a monoculture basically um mm. And we don't hear many stories that come out of it. But uh, today, the Australian government, like Scott Morrison, has said, okay, it's the possibility of a pandemic is actually very real. So, what happens in a country which um, has like basically pockets of different racial groups all over the cities? What happens if, say, Melbourne and Sydney get shut down for a couple of weeks or for a month, and you've got all these different um, racial groups? Uh, fighting over scarce resources exactly all of a sudden all yeah. this idea of the most tribal. successful multicultural country <laughs> in the world becomes tribal overnight yes yeah yeah, yeah. Th that's yeah. what that's what we're and, actually and, and, looking at and this is what people who have taken their red pills have been saying for uh years now or at least months if they're they're recently on board the red pill train which is that the only thing uh, between us and a catastrophic civil war in Western countries is our comfort. Hmm. As soon as white men in particular get really uncomfortable, as soon as, you know, it does, it's not even, it's not limited to, to white men, it's just men. As soon as the men in these uh, multicultural Western nations get seriously uncomfortable, that's when, you know, the boogaloo begins. Hmm. Uh, and so, you know, coronavirus could be it. I hope not, I pray not. Um, but it, it could very well be it. And, and that discomfort may not even be the, as you say, the illness itself, but it could be interruption to the supply chain. Mm. It could be disruption to, um, the services that we enjoy that make us comfortable. You know, I mean, God help us if, uh, if they turn off the porn, which, you know, would be a really good thing, but that stuff is there to numb men into subservience. And when those comforts, uh, disappear or, or diminish, shit gets nasty mm. well let's have a look at the uh the, the latest uh, coronavirus uh, stats because we're in well coronavirus outbreak 2.0 it is now a a, a glo yeah global, global uh virus now it's the infections let's uh, let's let's have a let's have a look so at there the... was more new cases outside china than inside china uh, so, so in... according to official chinese statistics <laughs> yeah and and, yeah, and i noticed the suspicious. articles that are reporting that are not saying uh over what period of time yeah, either because so obviously the, the total the number is still massively yeah, it's still uh, in china. 78 thousand cases confirmed mainland china to uh 2700 deaths recovery is 32,000. so it has a lower death rate than SARS, but mm. it spreads more. Because because the humans stay alive and spread it. Yeah, mm. that's actually quite ironic. Yeah. Yes, uh, so South Korea is now coming second. 
uh, Italy has has jumped up to They're international nice. conveyance. What's that? But mm. it, Italy is the interesting one. So mm. it's we're, we're hoping to see government ministers get out there on the airwaves and say it is your national patriotic duty to go to an Italian restaurant and support the Italian community <laughs> yeah. here in Australia. Go, go to Ligon Street in if you're in Melbourne, yeah. which is the famous uh, Italian uh, restaurant one. We don't want Ligon Street to be deserted. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so go yeah. there. Uh, have because don't be nice, racist. Nice Italian uh, meal. Yeah. And... Uh, Japan, that's hosting the Olympics this year. There's been talk that no, the it's Olympics not. could be <laughs> cancelled. Well, yeah. well, I think that the uh, looking at those figures... Iran is is next up, right, and yeah, we yeah. saw that, was it their, their Deputy Minister of Health, he had coronavirus and was coughing. <laughs> oh, are you serious? Yeah. He, he did later confirm that, yes, he had contracted it. <laughs> and he was like... <laughs> well, look, if, if uh, the Olympics do get cancelled in Japan, um, then at least it's good news for the trans community because then it'll be equal cancellation for all instead of just cancellation for the trans uh, competitors. <laughs> is Japan, Japan cancelling trans people going there or something? Is it? There's, there's been talk of it. I, 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 don't, I don't know uh, how far it went, but uh, you know, God bless wow. them if they do. Japanese are pretty based. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So now that it's affected Iran, we mm. all need to buy Persian rugs. I mean, you remember all those ads <laughs> where they always used to offer, was it 95% off or something? Like Persian <laughs> yeah. 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 Warehouse. Yeah. They're already very cheap. This rug used to be $32,000 and now it's $1.95. Well, it's $1.95 <laughs> because people are worried that <laughs> it might have it's, it's got coronavirus now. <laughs> who, who are you to not buy a Persian rug? I mean, you wouldn't want to be racist and not have a Persian rug. Mm. with Italian food on it and a bat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just remember there was an amazing South Park episode um, where like they, uh, there's a group of Indians who are trying to take over the South Park because they, they own a casino and they're, they're like, oh, we want to weaken the, the, the people of South Park. Let's give them some rugs, some Persian, some Persian rugs just I to like... Red yeah. Indians, you mean? Oh, yeah, Red yeah, Indians, yeah. yeah. Native so. Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, too. Is that what we're calling them now? Mm. Um, and so, yeah, oh, we'll, we'll give them some rugs as a symbol of our goodwill. And so then like, oh, we'll, let, we'll, we'll get them. And so they, <laughs> we, we, we'll give them SARS. And so they grab some Chinese guys and they rub them on the rugs. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen. I still, I, 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 in, in the early, in the I'm so ahead of their time. Oh yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, absolutely. When yeah. South yeah. Park yeah. came out, we didn't have videos things so much, and um, the only t TV show I used to watch was South Park, which was on SBS. Yeah, it was just awesome. <laughs> and I thought that South Park actually be beeped out all the swear words, mm. but it's not South Park. It was actually SBS that beeped them all. Oh, right. oh no, it was Comedy Central that that beeped it out okay. originally. Okay, because. The actual, even the Some DVD, even the DVDs back then, they now release uh, the episodes uncensored yeah. as well. But even the early releases of the DVDs, they still yeah, that that was when still the F word meant fuck, yeah. not <laughs> the other one, the one with a couple of G's in it. You know? Yes. Oh right. Yeah. yeah the yeah, one. Yeah. The, yeah. The, uh, yeah. We we re, we we played that. Uh, foggy. Foggy. <laughs> that, that ad last week that everyone was very offended the, by. The greatest advertisement of all time. Mm. Yeah. Well, there was this week uh, the Australian Federal Police. They released a Mardi Gras ad, and then they released a follow-up really? where they read out all of the uh, critical comments that they got. They released a follow-up, the Australian Federal Police. Oh, really? They should be catching... Were they reading out mean tweets, were they? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> comments like, why, why can't we have straight pride? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Was it a... Was the ad, the original ad, like, a whole bunch of cops in leather chaps? You know, butt cops, <laughs> chaps, or something? Dancing. What the hell are our government organisations doing? You know, you can you can almost understand them staying out of things like Mardi Gras altogether, but the way they're endorsing it, the way the police are like, we have pride to just do your freaking job and stop people from knifing each other, please. <laughs> was that a couple of years ago, the New South Wales police, they, uh, they, they posed with, uh, they, they were cross, but they were, what is it? BDSM furries. Like they were in, you know, the gimp outfits, but they're also furries. Like they're in like dog, thing wow mm. so they're already there read this people read culture it. of critique oh right holy bible yeah mm. absolutely <laughs> it's all in there that's a very white before. cover of it 
Oh yeah, that, this is this is my grandfather's uh, uh, supremely white <laughs> King James Bible. Mm. Maddie is reading the the King King James Bible. I nearly said King James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, Maddie, Maddie man will start up his own church. Just mm. give him a bit of time. Yeah. Well, I suggest it'll be that based. <laughs> yeah, it will be based. It'll be AF. based. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But the thing is, the Australian Federal Police, they probably would have spent about $10,000 producing that advertisement. Mm -hmm. I think everyone would prefer that money uh, to, to, to catching terrorists and pedos. Not yeah. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not yeah. I, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer it to um, going straight into the cost of building um, pyres for pedos. I hear, them, I hear, you know, I hear we, wood's we pretty know. cheap, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot of pies, ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a lot of pies. <laughs> Get you a lot of wood. Yeah. Uh, we're um while we're on the uh, concluding the the the, the far right uh, uh, chat with the well the the uh, cherry picking the media did of the ASIO director general's speech. Mm. Actually, if we can take it just like if we can take the conversation back half an hour, um. Uh, because you know we just went on a an amazing series of tangents which i really enjoyed <laughs> um so when you were talking about um how the police had the conversation with this guy and like the number one thing they were worried about was like uh the the far left terrorists mm. like the socialist or, socialist alternative or anti for whoever they were um th that that's the amazing thing out of uh that initial statement and article on uh burjo that it didn't actually include the far left terrorists um, eventually, Peter Dutton actually did uh, yeah, say, "Look, yeah, there's, ter there's terrorists on all sides. Yeah. You don't care what yeah. ideology yeah. is." And, and, and then the left just lost lost it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, then Peter you. Dutton he cucked a bit and said, "Oh, I meant uh, Islamists, the left wing." Yeah. Right. Did he okay. Say that? He cucked. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And wow. Uh, was it Richard Miles, who's the shadow defense minister, asked uh, in question time, "Why isn't there a white right wing uh, group on the terror watch list?" Like they just want, they didn't suggest one. They're just like, <laughs> just include one. <laughs> so it's because making it's lots we, of white babies isn't one, really, yeah. Mm. yeah, it's, it's a bit hard. Yeah. yeah. And, and, well, it's because, it's is, because the, I, uh, sorry, go on, Harry. This is, this is Peter Dutton, who is, who's, who's probably one of our farthest right politicians. Yeah. Yeah. Nick yeah. McKim, the, <laughs> the, the Greens, well, he's now deputy leader, uh, called Peter Dutton a fascist. Yeah. 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 Literally Hitler. Of mm. course. Yeah. <laughs> but you know this i think this fear of calling out the extreme left from our governments uh and and all those organizations that work uh, under the government it's because the architects of the ideology the revolutionary you know extreme leftist communist ideology have their um hands in all of the structures of our society yeah. you know yeah, they absolutely. they control the leaders of power at the okay. highest levels and all of these crazy antifa these are just the, the useful idiot foot soldiers mm. they're not the the designers or the architects oh, no. of the plan and and they they it's legitimate for the AF, the afp to fear the left-wing uh, terrorist groups the most because you you don't have to look back very far in history to see just how brutally effective they were in russia you know mm. when they uh, got rid of the the imperial family in the most disgustingly brutal manner possible when they when they came in these these foreigners and they staged a revolution you know they claimed it was a um a people's revolution it was a foreign takeover yeah. and they they staged it from within and this is happening here it's happening in america um you know you only need to look at the uh, the dual citizenships of the people in power to see that there are foreign interests controlling all of these government groups mm -hmm. and uh you know, and a lot of money, a lot of money, Soros money, other, other, you know, major financiers who are behind these, these, uh, foot soldiers. So think, yeah, they very, really are the enemy of civilization. I think it's very telling that, um, you quite often have people in, in very serious positions of power and it will be told quite matter of factly that either they, at, the, at this time or often when they were in their youth, uh, such and such was a Marxist. You know, yes. um, in their youth, you know, they yeah. were they were a Marxist, um, and and that's as far as it goes. Oh, they were Marxists in their youth. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Now, can you imagine that if anyone in any kind of a position of power, if it was, um, if it was found out or, or, or mentioned by someone that um, actually 
this guy in his youth was actually a Nazi and, and was like we were just seen in the, the you know with the burning cross and used to hang out and, and actually be a Nazi. That person would be we drummed immediately out out of their position and, and quite right. rightly so. I'm not don't get me wrong. There's nothing. I'm not making glorifying <laughs> in any way. Nazi. I saw that, Dave. <laughs> 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 I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm no fan of Nazis, but if, if you know, it's quite right that someone should be drummed out of a position for being a Nazi. But the fact that someone can can be can say, oh yeah, I was a Marxist in my youth, and and have no repercussions whatsoever, I find absolutely mind boggling. When when you look, well, it just, what, it just shows you who's in charge, Harry. Yeah, you know? yeah like, exactly, yeah, we... exactly. And, and all it is is uh, that is that the those other ideologies, you know, uh, national socialism among them. There are many, but national socialism obviously is the the great demon, the great boogeyman uh, to to these people. Uh, it's 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 a hundred year old battle between Nazis and commies, and uh, the commies are in control. We live in a communist society, even though you know people are still pretending we're not already there. We're there. It's just going to ramp up and get worse unless yeah. unless there's pushback, and it's it's this kind of extreme uh, bias and uh, ideological slant in the culture, academia, government, uh, even in our freaking banks and their advertising now, that is going to create um, a new Nazi regime as the as the op 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 the opposing and necessary pushback. Yeah. you know and it's a shame it has to get to these extremes but this is the swinging pendulum of history it's a sad part uh, yeah. now the uh, what i was getting to is you remember uh alex mann uh, there alex manlet yes yes uh, yeah, as you and maddie uh coined him he was the one who well he he had that uh, big expose with a little help from the white rose society about members of the lad society who joined their the New South Wales uh, young uh, nationals and were, were proposing all these uh, far right motions such as supporting uh, uh, white South African uh, farmers. How and, dare they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Alex Mann, he, 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 he went to like uh, dug up all of the, the, the comments that these various uh, lads members had made uh, online and then uh, turned up one night at their their clubhouse saying hi i'm from the abc i want to talk uh-huh mm. yeah and so uh he was lauded by the uh the left for this uh, investigative uh piece and then uh, then he basically became sort of their the 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 far right uh investigative journalist <laughs> they consider him an expert don't yes because yeah, yeah. his next because uh, yeah. it was an abc background briefing episode where you got to go on all the abc tv shows mm. uh, and that then he was back with a background this was around about september 2018 then in february 2019 he teamed up with uh, osman faruqi to do uh an expose on who they thought uh david clarkson was and uh, the way that uh, Alex Mann approached that is that all of the uh, the left wing trolls that uh, Clarkson doxes they all uh, didn't do nothing wrong, and he just victimizes vulnerable people. That's mm -hmm. how that's how it was spun. Yes, and he didn't yes. even get the identity of Dave Clarkson right. But yeah. he knows Osmond Freaky won the Kennedy Award. For f they won a Kennedy Award for fake news. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> uh, and then also he apparently found out uh, alex man that there were nazis working for fraser anning uh-huh mm. so so what's uh what's he up to lately ah uh, well uh he's if <laughs> you've seen his twitter it. he hasn't been uh producing uh a much original reporting so what he's decided to do is uh, go back in time he's uh, got this show the 11th with alex man and it's how much do you really know about the 11th of November 1975? And so it's a three-part podcast series on the Whitlam dismissal. As if they haven't saturated yeah, us like, with that. All, <laughs> like, the, the the one thing that we know the most about after the Holocaust is the Whitlam dismissal. Yeah, like, yeah. how many books, miniseries, documentaries, <laughs> interviews, like, there's been everything on that. Yeah. And, they, yeah, they describe him as award-winning journalist. Wow. So can you give me an award so I can describe myself as award-winning <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, Let's just give each other awards. Here you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> the, the, the only the only awards uh, worth winning these days are the unshackled ones, honestly. Yeah, the unshackler Absolutely. awards. I Absolutely. know that Tom yeah. Janicki, he was so glad. We didn't actually make up a trophy for him, so he made one for himself. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to make one for him next time. Yeah, oh, he, he, was, he was really uh, pleased about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he, yeah. he gave you guys plenty of free yeah, advertising. He did. He, did he has managed to to get his face uh, back on uh, TV again, uh, Alex Mann, to to promote this uh, mini uh, series. I've just got a a photo of him uh, here. This was. Oh, you're going to dox him, eh? Is that a tattoo? <laughs> that photo was taken by uh, Peter V, who's in the, the chat tonight, as I think. Hey, Peter. Um, uh, pissy Pants Pete, so he can explain that, whether it was a fly on the actual TV or... <laughs> was it on his head? Yeah. <laughs> it might have been a voluntary tattoo. We mm, will never be certain. You need it. Oh, here he is, here. Yeah, Pissy Leaks Pete. Mm, yeah. It was that... You took you took that photo. Was it? It was the fly on your TV, or actually in the TV? Yeah. He, he's got that kind of thin kind of face that you often see from lefties like that. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. he soy face. Story. Obviously, yeah. obviously, he yeah. hoped that he would graduate to TV after <coughs> his uh, expose. He's got a great face for radio, doesn't mm. he? Yeah. <laughs> like a few other people. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What else have we got? Oh, yes, the the uh, the national anthem of Advanced Australia Fair. I'm really upset about this. Yeah, it's, I'm really it's upset. News because uh, <laughs> Kathy Freeman. Uh, all across the board, respected Australian uh, Olympian. Everyone remembers her winning the 400 mm. uh, at the, that the Sydney was Olympics. Fast. Yeah, at the with the what is the that? Yeah, the head thing, <laughs> head thing on. Yeah. It was like and a precursor to the glider suits that you see on YouTube these days, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, you know, without yeah. the wings. Yeah, yeah. Or, the, or the bikini. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was where it came from. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, presumably designed to give more less wind resistance or something well apparently it? it was just really cold that night that's why she wore it <laughs> <laughs> it was cold that night actually I well, know. Yeah. <laughs> well anyway it looked cool and she won and she kicked us so yeah. you know a lot of uh, indigenous activists have had problems with the the words young and free because mm. australia is not young because we have the the oldest sure living civilization on the earth and so kathy uh, freeman's proposed that we change the words to one and free that we're one people okay. and that we're free and alan jones has got on board so has george christensen and uh, uh peter dutton and uh, chris kenny uh tonight so it looks like it, it probably will change because obviously the 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 leftist activists the the warriors of the aboriginal resistance they don't think australia should exist at all but with this uh, uh, I think Kathy Freeman has actually been quite clever with this because she's changed it from, she's ceded to their demands, but she's changed it to one and free, where one united people, when these leftist activists, these abolish Australia us. people, oh, they want to divide us. So it's actually a very clever oh. change. Yeah, she's promoting unity. Yeah, but, yeah. but it also it's, is a it, it's, of, it's a denial of reality, you know, because uh, yeah. Australia is young. Uh, and there was not a civilization here before. There were a bunch of tribes, and sure, they've they've come together as part of the Australian uh, experiment, and it's you know it's gone okay for a while. It's not looking too good at the moment, but we might get back on our feet. Uh, but yeah, Australia only came to exist when the Europeans got here, so it is a young country. Yeah, it's a young nation. Um, well, there's a lot omi yeah. omitted from the the national anthem and. Also, Advanced Australia Fair, and there, uh, the second verse says, for those who've come across the seas with boundless pla planes to share. Yeah, that's... Yeah, we might need to limit that now. We might <laughs> yeah. need to change I'll that one. you don't want to yeah. change the national anthem. Cool. Well, well the yeah, that, that, part's, that part's a bit a, a bit dangerous these days, Did, isn't it? What was the original? Have, you, have we got the original uh, I've, lyrics? I've got some original lyrics here. I love this. While other nations of the globe behold us from afar, we'll rise to high renown and shine like our glorious southern star from england's soil and fatherland scotia and erin fair erin is wales i think um let us 
let all combine with heart and hand to advance Australia fair. In the joyful strains, then let, let us sing adv advance Australia several fair. Several revisions. Is this the current one or? Uh, this this is the old one. Yeah. And and how about this? When gallant Cook from Albion sailed to trace w wide oceans o'er, true British courage bore him on till he landed on our shore. Then he he raised old England's flag, the standard of the brave, with all her faults. We love her still. Britannia rules the wave. In yeah, they yeah. kind of miss that. I love off, it, don't they? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Where's yeah. the lie, too? It's historical truth. Absolutely. And, and even uh, a, a, at least a, a vague acknowledgement of the faults. You know, it's like we're not a perfect nation. Uh, the British were not a perfect uh, civilization or a perfect empire. Uh, but by God, Australia would not exist without to, to, that British nation. They, they were big enough to admit their faults. I mean, that I, says a lot about any nation, I think. Maybe they're not. Maybe there's a bit of nativist sen sentiment in there, you know, because like there were the Aussies who were here, yeah, um, yeah. who didn't really think much of the British yeah, yeah. bringing in, faults, yeah. yeah, bringing in all the like foreign labor and, you know, like uh, there was that um, amazing poem, uh, Blood on the Wattle. I think it was Henry Lawson. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's talking about, ha about how we, uh, we built this country. Um, and once we'd actually, like we, we were the ones who toiled for it. And once we'd actually built something, then all the money came across from England and like, you know, they're like, oh, okay, we're taking over now. Yeah. Um, so there, there might yeah. be a bit of that in there. Yeah. I don't know. Well, similar to America, chains. but uh, America, <laughs> America de decided to become an independent nation, you know, and they went through a revolutionary war to achieve it. Whereas, uh, Australia never had that. We're still under the British monarch for some strange reason um but you know it's like either we need to completely uh cut loose and begin again as a as a new nation and and um and not be you know not consider ourselves to be a product of of the british empire um which you know i'm sure at least that much a lot of uh the lefties would agree with um you know or or we need to acknowledge truthfully the british roots of australia and you know and it doesn't mean we can't include the people who were here before us but they've been incorporated into modern australia which is a young nation and a, and a new thing so you know i, I think kathy's intent is good hmm. with oh. a lyrical change there but I, I, I you know unfortunately it's revisionist I, I don't know like to me this stinks of um create the problem um off, uh, offer a solution um, and what's the next one? Then it's, uh, Can take the money. money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, 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 that's what it stinks to me of. It's like, oh, okay, let's put Kathy Freeman up as the sort of moderate face. Cause like she, she the good cop. Yeah. Like, uh, cause uh, like, I've, I like Kathy Freeman. Yeah. Like, um, she, uh, she's always been the one who she's always been the prominent Aboriginal who kept their mouth shut about this sort of stuff well, and it's, just it's, focused it's not, on sport like, and just that. doing she a thing. She didn't play the victim identity yes. politics. Yes. Um, that's well, the yeah, wrong, yeah, wrong thing to say. Okay, she didn't keep her mouth shut. True. Yeah, she didn't play the victim. Um, and so that's, that's why I'm saying this stinks of, hey, they're offering a, a solution to basically change something just a little bit further. Um, I've, well, I've got, I, think, yeah. I think the problem does exist, though. Like, the, the vision is, is really here. You know, it really does exist. It's not creating a problem that's not there. Now, it's not everywhere and it's not in all places. And it's really just a lot of uh, these, you know, leftist types that we've been talking about who are continuing to sow the seeds of, of division because they want to fracture and destroy the country. Um, but, you know, it's it's there nonetheless and it's ramping up. So Because they created it's a futile, it though. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's been created. But that that's the plan, right, is to um, overthrow yeah is to subvert and divide and destroy i've got i've got to say like um because you guys told me about this just before it went on air um one of the things adam piggott's sort of the way he described the red pill um and going through that red pilling journey it's like we have all these ropes um that tie us to like our old way of thinking and our old life um and sort of going on a red pill journey it's like you cut off those old the, those old ties and you free yourself mm. from it um and mm. it's like like hearing that this is what kathy freeman has proposed is like it's cut one of those ropes because like for me like uh, kathy freeman for me was like one of those last hopes in the same way that um i don't know harry was for me one of the last hopes of the british monarchy um <laughs> I, I, I was kind of hoping that like she would just you know not get into all of this um and like you you'll hear me like like when we've discussed all of this sort of stuff about like 
both Maddie and I, like we've, we've said, like we're actually in favor of um, like an Aboriginal nation. Like I'm like, well, mm. look, we are uh, of European British origin. Yes, we conquered this land. I know you and I disagree on this. Um, uh, and it's un it's actually understandable that the Aboriginals resent this. This is actually what the left have right. Like all of this, um, what we see is virtue signaling. Well, like it, it, it's just as insulting well, to some, say to Ab some resent. Yes, us. It, it, but it's insulting to say to the Aboriginals, "Hey, we conquered you. Now just in, enjoy all the benefits of it." It's it's like like how do how do you think they feel about it? They lost their country, but like when this sort of stuff happens, I'm like. I just get a little bit harder, a little bit colder towards them. And I'm like, well, you know, like if you keep acting like this, we're not, we're going to stop well, caring and you don't want us to stop caring. As, as we talked about before with the, the, the potential risks of the uh, pandemic ahead, uh, mm. is what, uh, naturally happens. Uh, and it's an unavoidable reality of human nature is that as uh, adversity and division grows, tribalism grows to counter it and people revert to their tribe. And the tribe is the race, you know, so we'll, we'll see as the division grows, people will just go more and more. All right, well, let's just look after our people and make that a priority. Uh, and, and, you know, we white Europeans are the last ones to the party at this stage because uh, everyone else is already doing it. Uh, everyone else is already doing it. And, um, you know, and I'm, I'm absolutely for, uh, the, the Aboriginal, uh, people having at least one you know, a geographical region that's entirely theirs and having autonomy and having freedom from uh, outside influence. You know, I'm against colonialism. You know, I think it was a, it was a great evil that occurred um, in, you know, breaking up and stealing uh, any amount of lands that were to whatever degree they were. We can talk about that another time. But, um, but yeah, you know, like let people, let every nation bloom, like every nation, um, should have an opportunity to freely exist, but it means that others can't trample on, on them. We can't, they can't trample on us, everyone back to their corner and mind their own business. And this, this is that, you know, great repatriation idea and the reversion to, uh, racial tribalism that I, I predict will, will occur because it, it reverts back to basically notice, the nature. Uh, Alexandria Marshall, who I've had on episode of, of Wilms front, uh, prominent, uh, right-wing Twitter warrior, she, uh, she mentioned the coronavirus that the, the globalized world that we've created, this is why it's spreading so much, the coronavirus, now that we thought it was just confined to China, and then all of a sudden we're, uh, we're saying, well, it's, it's in every country now, I mean, some people are suspicious that, hang on, we thought it was under control, then there's this new outbreak, where, where did that come from? But she's right there. Yeah, globalism means that um, somebody else's problem is everybody's problem now. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. yeah. Like a, you know, and it's funny, you know, who, there's, there's this, sorry, Harry, go Some on. guy who's in a nutcase in, in a cave in Pakistan or Afghanistan suddenly becomes a problem to people in New York you yeah. know, or, or, or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. The, yeah the, the world's become smaller and that's not always a good thing. Hmm. Uh, over on Entropy, we've got a super chat from Port Film Co-op for three US dollars. Thank you so much. And... Uh, I'm glad you figured out how to use the new entropy. He was one of the biggest complainers that he couldn't log into the, the new entropy, but he's figured it out. The only conservatives that matter are Christians. Look at Alan Jones wanting to change the anthem. Too many libertarian LARPers. Yeah. Hey, man. Some, yeah. Hey, sorry to show my ignorance here. LARP. What's a LARPer? What's it? Just, it's, it's live it's action a... role play. Sorry, what is it? It's, it stands for live action role play. So it's like taking a, like a video game role play where you become a character and it's doing it in real life. So it's putting on the costume and pretending to be something that you're not really. No, that's okay. not what LARP is. Yes, it is. That's what LARPing is. Yeah. That's online what LARPing, LARPing means. means that you posture online that you're the most okay. pure libertarian yeah, 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 yeah. or whatever. Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's the, but the term, the term comes from, um, the, the people, you know, largely autists who, took their their passion for role play games either board games like dungeons and dragons or video games and then they started to do it in real life where they dress up and th there are huge communities and clubs of people who go out and laugh it's a massive thing 
and they do it. But now that term has become a meme to um, to represent anyone who's pretending to be something that they're not. Yeah, like the the, the, the communists who are in the libertarian forums uh, uh, telling the, the libertarians in there, uh, my uh, stealth uh, communist idea is what you libertarians should be supporting. Right, okay. Yeah, because it's actually really libertarian, because mm. we'll all be free once we're You should support Extinction Rebellion uh, super gluing themselves to the road because uh, police are brutally removing them. And you hate the state too. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, to to offer a thought on on Port Film Co-op's comment there, uh, you know he's right. I mean, libertarians are really pushing a satanic idea, um, the the libertarian movement. And I, I started out there, and you know, um, on my red pill journey, and I, I still have a lot of friends who, well, maybe not a lot. I still have a few friends who are who would identify as libertarians still, and. Uh, you know what that total freedom that hyper individualism that was you know really pushed by by people like ayn rand and objectivism um is is really uh, a satanic idea you know and it's as he says the conservatives that matter are the christians because they accept the yoke of jesus and they uh, accept their slavery to god which means that they have a master who is perfect and higher than all other things and brings and is the judge and the giver of the moral law and so we're slaves to the moral law rather than being totally free to create our own moral law and uh, do whatever the hell we want which is a degenerate uh, position so i'm, I'm i think, totally I think the that. term slave would be the wrong term uh, because that comes from a, a different uh, religious group um but the the, the christian idea it's in the bible it's in the Bible that we're slaves to we're slaves well, to Christ. In the New Testament, well, I think we're, we're, we're referred to as, uh, like they refer to people as, as children of God, isn't it? God the Father. Slaves to Christ. We're, we're slaves. What about we're God willing, the Father? We're willing slaves. It's okay to be a slave to Jesus. <laughs> okay. But yeah, God, yeah, God's the, I was, I was going God's to believe that the, the Christian um belief was more the relationship to god was more like a, a child to the father you know um th like the the story of the prodigal son and all that sort of thing like the, the as you grow in your faith that's the relationship between a slave and a master is, like, is different to a a child to the father more well it that, depends on the master doesn't it i i guess so but i i don't think there's any master who treats his slaves like he treats his children or the be quite exceptional i wouldn't be so sure of that i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't assume I, that i've never tried it so i wouldn't, I wouldn't no nor have i yeah no I'm, i mean i'm not saying you're wrong i just i think it's a big assumption to make and i think there's a bit of programming behind that that idea that um that all masters of slaves throughout history were evil you know tyrannical bastards yeah there may very well have been some uh some masters of slaves who were very very good and in fact um you know you look at some of the stories in the old testament you see situations where the master and the slave had a very loving and you know congenial and uh, almost reciprocal relationship uh so you know it's maybe it's a semantics thing but uh to be a slave uh in the in the christian context to be a slave to christ is to be totally subservient to and allow the will of god to govern your choices and your uh your morals rather than um having the freedom to make it up for yourself and I think that's that's the distinction between Christian conservatism and and libertarian laughing, as Port Co-op put it. And we might go over to uh, the United States because they've got another uh, primary, the South Carolina mm -hmm. uh, primary. So they had another uh, debate. It was hosted by CBS, where the the moderators didn't seem to moderate. All the candidates were putting their hand up. I want to speak. I want to address it there. Last time they all went after. Michael Bloomberg yeah. for stuff that he said, particularly Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, so stuff that he'd said about uh, uh, women mm -hmm. and non-disclosure agreements. And Bloomberg mm -hmm. came back this week said, "Oh, we've released all the women from the non-disclosure agreements. We're not going to uh, use them anymore at uh, Bloomberg LP." Oh wow! So, so he stopped beating his wife. That's kind of you know like he's basically yeah. admitted yeah we 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 do this yeah and <laughs> it's Elizabeth so funny Warren. watching that guy blow a fortune on this uh, on yeah. this ridiculous. I hope race. he spends a lot more. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, he did have. Did you all see the slip of the tongue that he had during the debate? No. When he because they they yeah were, yeah I bought them <laughs> yeah he, because they're all accusing him of like oh you back when you're a Republican you helped Lindsey Graham. Uh, get elected, you helped all these Republicans, you defeated uh, good uh, Democrat 
uh, candidates. Uh, so, so this is what uh, Bloomberg's response was. Just say. The, all of the new Democrats that came in, put Nancy Pelosi in charge, and gave the Congress the ability to control this president, I, bought, I, I got them. Number two. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sounds like he's been spending this money uh, for political influence for quite some time, huh? <laughs> I swear, I swear, if you if you go to a, a therapist for uh, for regular psychoanalysis um, sessions, like like so many uh, Americans and particularly New York Americans do, you do you you let more Freudian slips out, you know. And uh, there's a perfect example. Which shows of it. that the globalists are getting way more sloppy. That he was, <laughs> hey, I've bought like Democrats as well. <laughs> he should have. He should have just owned it. Like you know, there's no, there's no fooling anyone that this guy isn't just a, a money, uh, you know, a money yeah, tree. He's Mr. And, Burns um, trying to buy the yeah. film festival. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like. That's what I like about Trump is that when you, whenever he comes across something like that, he just doubles down on it. Yes. He, yeah. Trump would have gone, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And and <laughs> and because because the interviewers are all so used to people running away and freaking yeah. out, yeah. they just don't know yeah. what to say. Then they just. Yeah. Go, like blown yeah. away and then real americans yeah. just go yeah i love this guy yeah that's right that's how it happens that's right. yeah. Yeah. yeah he doesn't virtue signal uh, yeah. accused of uh, uh tax evasion in the debates and he's like well of course i, I try to avoid uh paying <laughs> uh, uh paying more tax uh, than i uh, than i have to that's what everyone does oh sorry that uh, uh you you don't know how to uh <laughs> do your books so you pay less tax <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's called fiduciary responsibility. You can actually get sued um, and uh, sacked by your board of directors in a company if you um, if you blunder into paying more tax than you're supposed to. Hmm. There are plenty of legal ways to evade uh, paying excessive tax, and hmm. and any good business person takes every loophole that they can. The the, the best um, explanation was by I don't know if you ever saw the the um, Kerry Packer being interviewed by in the Senate. Yes. You ever see that one? He, yeah, the, the, the Senate were grilling him over his, yeah, um, his tax uh, returns, and he, he, the, 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 the people were so incompetent. I can't believe the Americans always have these really good people grilling people, but the uh, Australian Senate senators were grilling Kerry Packer, and they said, "Oh, um, they start off saying how how much did, how much did you earn last year?" He said. I don't know, ask my accountant. <laughs> and then they said, well, how much tax did you pay? Well, I don't know, ask my accountant. <laughs> and, and they just, well, um, well, did you try to, did you avoid paying taxes that you should have paid? He said, I don't think so. I, said, I didn't tell my accountant to do that. We're supposed to pay all the tax. He said, well, did you minimize your tax? And you said, well, of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> and, and every man in Australia would Crazy. do the same. Yeah. And he said, yeah. I, I wouldn't mind paying more tax if I thought you guys were gonna, weren't going to do such stupid things with the money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> waste it. <laughs> so it, it was brilliant. If you, you look it up on YouTube, it's on there. It's, a br it's just okay. amazing. Thing. Okay. But there's yeah, a similar okay. sort of a, a thing. Yeah. Uh, South Carolina primary is significant because it's the first primary which has a, a significant uh, black population. And... Pete Buttigieg said, oh, we've got to be aware that we're all uh, white people on the stage. And in, isn't it interesting that <laughs> they did have all these black and brown candidates, uh, Camilla Harris. They're gone. Uh, uh, yeah, Andrew Yang, <laughs> squad. Uh, uh, Julian Castro, uh, Cory Booker. But they all dropped out because they were polling well when the Democrat. And so, 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 as, so as somebody suggested that the structure of like, uh, like who they put, like which states they put first is actually racist. Well, Iowa, 90% uh, white, Not, New yeah. Hampshire, 98% white, yeah, okay. uh, Nevada still, I mean, it's demographically changing, uh, yeah. but uh, it's still majority white yeah. for the time being. I realize I just used the term of the enemy, but yeah, mm. yeah. Like they, they could say, well, you know, like put, put the black ones first to give the mm. black candidates, yeah. you know, uh, t like uh, why, why don't the Democrats I, do that? I don't think, I think that the way that it's organized is that the states actually choose when they, when they go to the polls. Okay. Cause the, how convenient. <laughs> New, yeah. New Hampshire, well, each, each state chooses. Um, yeah. Well, it's and always New been Hampshire tradition, tradition that I was the first mm. caucus and then the, uh, Nevada had a caucus, which uh, Bernie Sanders won. There was no <laughs> shadowy app failure. <laughs> uh, but this is South, uh, South Carolina is Biden's last shot because yeah. they. <laughs> it's really weird how the blacks they always vote for the establishment. They all voted for Hillary in 2016. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, nice one, there's Colin. something in the chat. Nice, nice one, Colin. <laughs> uh, just uh, in, in the live chat, there's... Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, I don't know if we can read that, but, uh, but yeah, good one, Colin. Solid. <laughs> yeah, it's solid. Uh, yeah, you haven't. Oh, okay. um, uh, that's that's not true. <laughs> I'm not okay. aware of. Uh, okay. uh, of that he's Milo. not a Milo. Yeah. No, no. He, he's don't, married. To don't a, let facts get in the way of lols. Yeah, he's married to a Jewish teacher. Okay. He said during. Imagine my shock. Uh, J, he said, "I know a lot about public education. I'm married to a teacher." Hmm. And I remember Nick Fentis said, oh, you've got to remember that he's talking about his gay husband. Yeah. <laughs> and there's Tom Steyer. He's the, uh, he's the Bloomberg with a lot less money. He bought his place <laughs> on the stage. Line. Yes, he said, I'm in favour of reparations for slavery. Oh, wow. But he They're said it there. is that he's not for just basically writing a blank check to, to individual black people. He wants it to oh, good. build, like, infrastructure for black communities. Oh, because they've like. never tried that before. Yeah, yeah. yeah more, more, the universities need more multicultural centres to kick white people out of. That's what definitely yeah. needs to happen with yeah. the American taxpayers' dollars, for sure. Yeah. I, mm. I'm glad you, <laughs> you, you, you mentioned his name because I couldn't pronounce it before. It took us a while. <laughs> what, what, was it, what is it again? But, 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 yeah. No, but, 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 America. Oh, really? Not, uh, not a buck gig for America. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, don't they have to, this gag's going around, and I think it's based on the fact that they have to abbreviate the surnames on the ballot, and it'll, it'll, um, uh, but it'll turn out badly. P, P, his middle name starts with, with P as P well, so, so P Peter Paul, so P, 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 but is what his name will say yeah. on the ballot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's juvenile, but it's fun. Yeah, it's well, as I said before, uh, the United States, they elected Barack of Hussein Obama <laughs> twice, mm. had yeah. a name that sounded like a terrorist. Mm. And look, if they're allowed to um, have a have a massive field day on on Stephen Colbert's uh, lame gag about Drumpf and uh, and his other one of you know the uh, thought, the anagram you, of his name, I, I, I thought you were you were supposed to respect people's name. You're supposed to call uh, well Caitlyn Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, but, yeah, don't uh, dead don't dead name them. I think mispronunciation is uh, is acceptable because you know um, yeah, people but, have thick yeah, accents. I've got a, a thick past, Irish accent. Though, yeah, so. that was allegedly a, pa <laughs> a past uh, past surname of the Trump family. So, uh, oh really? Yeah. Um, no, it wasn't Colbert. It was the 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 British <laughs> one, John Oliver, who who. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're he all the basically same. They're what all is it? Uh, five generation dead name Trump <laughs> by calling him Drumpf. All right. <laughs> well, anyway, if they can have drums, then we can have pee-pee butt. It's yep. only fair. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's called reciprocity, people. Mm. That's right. Uh, uh, and it's another hard one to pronounce. It's always it's hilarious how yeah. some people's surnames it like fits in with like. Because remember, there was uh, the Con New York congressman Anthony Weiner who was taking yeah. pictures of his yeah. Weiner yeah. to Santa yeah, Claus, yeah. and he claimed yeah. that he was Twitter hacked. Yeah, I, I better do a uh, disclaimer. I'm aware that. I, w I aware that I'm throwing stones in a glass house right now. <laughs> hey, mate, at least they're his and not hers. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and they also talk, because after the sort of chaos at the beginning, whether because they're, they're all attacking uh, Bernie for his, what is it, uh, his costings are, what is it, something, yeah. 150 trillion? It's something More than obscene the like that. in 60 years. Yeah, and he, was, and he was he was finally asked about uh, his uh, praise for Fidel Castro, and he said, I said that Cuba has uh, uh, good literacy, even um, uh, dictators and bad regimes, they had their good points. Oh, so is he cucking on, is he cucking on Castro? Um, well, Perhaps yeah. he did have his honeymoon in the Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a little, it's a little hard to get out of that one. Yeah. And, but this uh, this second time around, uh, uh, because he is ethnically Jewish, even though he is a secular mm. Jew. In twenty sixteen, they described him as uh, the the son of Polish immigrants. But because the his supporters, the the squads, uh, they're, they're they're known for their 
um, anti-Semitism, <laughs> non-support for <laughs> Israel. Uh, they're they're, 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 they're now touting that he'd be the first Jewish American president. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's the beautiful thing about fluid identity is you can just sort of change teams as it suits your political agenda. But he is, it's true. He is ethnically yes. Jewish. Yes. Like he's, yeah. But, you know, yeah, I mean, this is, like this a, is a like thing a we see a lot. Yeah. We see this a lot like uh, David Schwimmer, you know, recently coming out and, you know, with his pouty little punchable face saying, um, uh, you know, I, I'm really aware of my white privilege. And it's like, so, wow. so, uh, he can be white when he chooses to be to speak against whites uh but next minute he'll he'll be absolutely identifying as the tribe that he really belongs to mm. so it's it's fluid identity and it's this you know again the dual citizenship thing just uh keeps keeps coming out harry i've, I've got to ask you um because i owe a dude a favor uh what's your favorite jean-claude van damme film <laughs> this is paul film um, co-op he's asked this question Okay, I, yeah. uh, I'm going to have to make a terrible admission here that I've never actually watched the Jean Claude Van Damme film. Um, right. I, I actually, I actually used to tie box, but mm -hmm. I, I've never liked martial art films, the genre, the genre as a whole. Uh, one, probably the only martial art film I can think of that I actually liked was Kill Bill, the, the oh, Kill yeah. Bill ones. That's pretty good. Um, which, which are quite good. Most oh, and Kung Fu Panda. It's not a good martial probably. arts film, but it's Kung a, it's Fu an Panda has got to be my. <laughs> Go for martial arts films, Kung Fu Panda, but uh, Jean Claude I'm Van sure, Damme. I'm sure Jean Claude Van Damme did one of the voices in that. He was probably, maybe. probably. I think he was yeah. a tiger or something like that. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there you go, Port Film. I, I yeah, hopefully I've another I made question uh, here. Uh, this is a sort of more one that we can more easily answer. <laughs> uh, so he's yeah. asked, uh, "Do you guys know about the debate coming up between Jared Taylor and E. Michael Jones?" Oh, no, that would sound like no, a good debate. We do now. That'll be worth a look. Mm. Be awesome. Epic. Because yeah, Ben Shapiro getting in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some people not worth debating according to, to Ben Shapiro. Right. That's what he yeah, said okay. about Nick. Yeah, and Quintes. Ben Shapiro is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is the CPAC, the, the main one in the, the United States that's coming up now. There's also AF pack which uh, right. uh michelle melkin she was the, the the tiny asian in the middle of the uh america first uh students mm -hmm. she's uh she she used to speak at uh, cpac but because she wouldn't disavow uh nick fuentes uh she's now speaking at uh af pack america first uh pack uh, but uh, they they uh, they've uh, disinvited to cpac of uh, laura luma uh, Gavin McGuinness, Miley Yiannopoulos, but do you know who they've given a press pass to? Uh, some lefty, yeah? The other Jared, Jared Holt, who runs Right, right Wing Watch. Okay. So they allow him in to be a media observer, but, oh, we can't have these extremists there. Yeah. Which basically says it all. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Fake right. The, the, conser <laughs> the conservative uh, ink movement is well and truly dead, and uh, we have to uh, take our figurative hats off to the Groypers for uh, sort of dealing the death blow recently um you know I, i'm i'm not a huge fan of um of nick fuentes generally uh but i you know i i appreciate the consistency of his message and and also how much he's been able to rally the, the bigger america first movement um around in particular taking out the uh conservative ink folks it's just been beautiful to watch them do that yeah well, since they've well, they've tried to destroy Michelle Malkin Conservative Inc. because she she wouldn't disavow Nick Fuentes. They've well, as they do character assassinate her, but they don't know who they're taking on. Michelle Malkin, she started out twenty five years ago just at a no name California paper, and like she's made it herself, and now she's spilling the beans on how Conservative Inc. media outlets like the Daily Row really work. It's not uh -huh. it's not really uh, like subscription member based. There's a lot of a donor money there and so she's basically well you guys tried to ruin me i'm gonna tell everyone how you really yeah. operate mm. which mm. is good honor mm. Mm. that is an important point like they they like to say oh you know like you guys out there on the fringe like if you want to like attract a big audience like us you've got to you've got to sort of say this and all this and do and ki kiss these people's butts but really like the only reason that a lot of these organizations can actually function is because they have big donors yeah yeah, yeah. sugar daddies yeah, yeah. I, I think that's um a lot of people sort of scratch their heads and they look at the, these left-wing organizations hmm. and they they say look at all the money that gets up raises you know and, uh, 
I, I'm I'm really skeptical of this because mm. I mean trying to raise the, raise money f as a right wing organisation is almost impossible, mm. and and you're talking about people who are you know right wing are, are kind of generally better off mm. people you know people mm. actually with well, some money now you try have you ever tried raising money from students and and you know <laughs> <laughs> from 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 ferals and, yeah. and and general lefties I, they I, don't I, have money <clears throat> i don't think that i don't think they would donate if you if you if you, if you, you know if you if you put a blowtorch to the feet well yeah but it's big it's, it's big money right it's so yeah. just drop, yeah. drops yeah. drops yeah. Well, money bags on some get up, organizations get which get a uh, big money like uh, get up <laughs> uh we it was revealed their balance sheet this week and oh, as yes. as, bec uh, as as is normal with the left they they can't manage uh money so this was published in the uh australian i got around the paywall by uh getting this information from right on which is a queensland uh right based on. uh conservative uh advocacy uh group uh, definitely the quiet achievers uh, they right do a on lot the, of right uh, on, the fabulous. on the on the ground work and they're big fans of uh the unshackled <coughs> xyz all of us so, um which is which is great to hear oh here we go here so they're they uh donations 12.4 million total revenue 13.2 then their <laughs> campaign 3.6 Employee salary uh, benefits seven point two million. Admin costs one point four million. Rent eight hundred thousand. Travel five hundred thousand. Other one hundred ninety six. So they made a a six hundred and sixty eight thousand dollar loss. <laughs> wow. Twelve million. And dollars. yeah, and ten ten million dollars are uh, basically lining the pockets of the uh, the people who who run the organisation. Yeah. So um, um, yeah, imagine that, again, imagine the, my shock. Yeah, Johannes <laughs> Leek. This is the cartoon oh. that he did. Now that this is the the the, the CEO of uh, uh, Get Up There. Now that's what I call uh, making real change. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's great. I've I've got to say, like if if like the combined alt media here in Australia, like alt independent right wing media here in Australia, had ten million dollars, <laughs> um, you like uh, there would be like about six million dollars left over and we would um be far more effective than any get up campaign yeah we might be putting it into like you know rehousing south african you know boa farmers or, or actually helping out some people who are suffering amidst this uh this yeah. massive uh anti-white anti-right um yeah. crisis we're facing yeah. so. and when i say six million would be left over like um like th uh, three and a half million of that like would be like us sort of blowing it like just just for the hell of it anyway we'll like, have a big hangover man i, I, I yeah. think it'd be six, <laughs> I, I think six million is not enough i think it'd be six gorillion left over bro absolutely if we had the yeah. Money. Yeah. yeah 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 um yeah just saying because like you know like all of us guys you know we're workaholics <laughs> and we just we just work and uh imagine if uh we didn't we're clearly not in this for the money yeah. <laughs> yes yeah. you know it's it's come at a cost to all yeah. of us i would say uh you know more than a more than any great profit but it's yeah. uh it's a labor of love we love our we love our nation we love our civilization we love the truth and uh you know we all, and we appreciate the the two dollar and five dollar um super chats they're brilliant yeah they're great. last uh last call for, for super chats i put the uh the link in in entropy again we might uh finish off i mean well we've got you in here harry uh so well give us a, a brief blurb and history of the now what it's called the, the richardson post <laughs> i was hoping you wouldn't ask that but um oh. yeah look at it, oh, the people are asking <laughs> okay so as in you know the the changeover or no no or just um the, just uh, the uh like what the the site's about uh, uh, who is your yeah. daddy and what does he do <laughs> <laughs> you will want to know um okay so we we don't get 12 million dollars a year from from uncle george soros or anything we um we're we're uh we're a site that was started by larry pickering who was a cartoonist um uh, an Australian cartoonist. He, he was a lot of things, actually. Cartoonist was one of the one one of the things that he rose to the very top in. Yeah. He was actually bizarrely. He, he was he he was a tomato farmer and made a big success of that. Or almost. He, he invented a, a tomato picking machine. He he he, he trained a racehorse. He bought a, he, he opened a racehorse facility. He, he trained 
a race for a horse which I think he bought for about five hundred dollars or something, and it came second in the um, in the Melbourne Cup. And he he swore that the the jockey who was supposed to be riding it dropped out, and he had to get a jockey at late notice. And he had a Kiwi jockey that rode it, and he gave him instructions on how to ride this thing. And the jockey ignored it and and rode his own race, and it came second. And he swore that if he did done as he had been asked that he would have won the race and he's hated the entire kiwi race to, to the <laughs> day he died as a consequence um but larry was a curse your entire cartoonist. nation <laughs> <laughs> there was a reason for the underarm ball huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, so but larry was was an incredible character he was really well known he was in journalism for years and um he was an incredible cartoonist he could draw cartoons that just would he could just nail it you know we just have, have you in stitches mm. and um after he, he retired and did different things and then he came back to media um basically uh, at the, in the gillard years mm -hmm. he was really disgusted what was going on with julia gillard he told me that he that um gillard had gone into the sydney morning herald when he was in there and told the editor you're not going to publish this this and this and the editor was like, well, hang on, I mean, you can't do that, you know. So it, the editor resisted this and the editor got, got punted. He was like, see you later. Well, uh, while she was prime minister. Well, yeah, so this was what Larry told me. Mm. And, and Larry, on this kind of thing, I, I would have trusted Larry. And um, so he was disgusted by the way that the media had really was, was going downhill. And so he started up his, uh, you know, a, a media website. Um, he didn't have much technical expertise, but some of his... Uh, it's actually one of his grandkids, I think, that set the site up and everything like that. And so he started doing the Pickering Post and and, and he just started writing his own opinions on, on, on news and, and the like. And he built up a, an audience which built up a, a, a really huge audience. Um, now, Larry um, passed away a bit over a year ago. He he um, <laughs> yeah, he died. of He had a, a lung cancer unfortunately he, uh, he was in his late 70s yeah he was and he was a smoker all of his life he was he was insistent that smoking wouldn't cause cancer it's still it's still a good innings uh, <laughs> he, had a good, 70s. he had a very good innings. he was he was really strong guy you know like, he, like physically strong you know mm. um, he'd done all sorts you know he was, he was just a tough guy all around um and i i started writing for larry um a couple of years before before this and i uh, got, got along quite well with larry so i i took on the site after he passed away, um, he he actually the, the, I, I met up with Larry and I gave him a copy of my book. I don't know if you, I, I didn't bring a copy down with me. I'd like to spruik it here. You know the the um, story of Muhammad, which many of you might see. You can look it up on Amazon or whatever. Which was sounds uh, book. truthful uh, but triggering. Um, well, it was designed not to trigger people actually. That oh, was, I'm just saying yeah. that it's it's not your intention. Okay. It's it's people uh, people would be triggered they take take if you get what i mean the yeah it's taken not yeah yeah other. by the book the yes. story of well yes uh, the, the 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 thing about the book was that um and where it varies there's lots of books by people like us about islam and muhammad and the like um but they tend to be um some along the lines of muhammad was a murdering killing pedophile you know mm. uh, and people on the left would look at the book like this and go well i'm not reading that because it's obviously some hate monger you know um the difference with my book and think what i i managed to do was uh, when i wrote it i'd had a lot of um conversations with people on on probably the left or even the center you might say who had told me that they would not uh, you know they, they completely disagreed with, with what i was saying i was having really difficulty getting through information about islam to these people this is going back you know, uh, over a decade now when it, this was a lot uh, a lot harder to get through and um so the book was written with the intention of getting around people's resistance so that people would pick up the book it, it, to look at it the story of muhammad i mean people say well, are you a muslim you know no 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 just read the book you know and, and the picture on the front is a, a quite an attractive girl in a burqa and you start reading the story and it's quite um the story is it starts off quite moderately so i, I don't jump in there and i just tell the story and while i was telling the story i i i knew all the little rabbit holes that people disappear down so as i'm telling the story i closed off those rabbit holes 
So as people read there and they go, well, well, hang on, what about, the, oh, no, hang on, he's closed that one off already. He's already explained how that's not working. So that they have to keep going and, and the story becomes more and more engrossing and more and more terrible. And by the time they get to the end, they're like, oh my God, I didn't realize it was all that, you see. So mm. um, the book was a real successor. I self-published it and I sold 30,000 copies oh, wow. plus. Fantastic. Which, um, which yeah, which was pretty, pretty good going. It's probably more than Kevin Rudd sold his yeah, well, books. A, be a bestseller is, is ten thousand books, I think. So yeah. it was it was definitely a bestseller. But mm. you, you know, I'm, I've, I haven't been uh, the New York, the New York Times haven't rung me. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. you so, won't get the, you won't get the badge of honor. Mm. Yeah. So. Do you mean that their bestsellers list is 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 fake? <laughs> <laughs> fake news. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, possibly. I don't know. I, I couldn't comment on that. Mm. But um, yeah. So anyway, because um, of the book, Larry got to know me and and asked me to write for him. So I started writing articles, and then when Larry passed away, I took over the site, mm. and it's now become the Richardson Post finally, which um, is a, a thing in itself. Um, but it's the same. It's the same website. It's just that we, we were. I actually had to go that way. I did. The, I when I had to change the name, I won't go into details. And the last name that I wanted was the Richardson Post. And I, I thought of all these other names and was brainstorming. We didn't, we didn't have much time. And um, then we'd, we'd go online and say, right, can we get the dot com? No, it's taken. All the good names, the dot com's mm -hmm. taken. And in the end, the Richardson Post, yeah. you could get the dot com. So. You, you, you didn't want to call it the the Richo Post, but that brings <laughs> connotations with Graham Richardson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's the I'm colostomy not, he, bag and everything. He, he, oh, he's <laughs> probably trademarked the term Richo. Yeah, probably has. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, knowing him, yeah. Uh, but yeah, our, uh, Larry Pickering at the when he came out of retirement, basically to take on Gillard is certainly he, he, he because I remember at the time you couldn't basically. Well, as Tony Abbott found, you couldn't look yep. at your watch without being accused of being a misogynist <laughs> and say, Larry Pickering, you deliberately drew Gillard with this huge bum. Well, yeah. and, and, and he and would depict her naked with the big strap, strap on. on yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, he, so he went all the way, Larry did. He was never one to back away from yeah. controversy. And yeah. the, the, the SMH guy, I didn't know that he got punted, but he wasn't the only one. Uh, Michael Smith, he got sacked from... TUE, he founded okay. his own media, michaelsmithmedia.com, okay. yeah, yeah. right. which yeah. we sourced uh, uh, tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, also Glenn Milne, he got fired from the Australian for writing about the, the AWE slush fund scandal. Oh, yeah. which, was what, which was what Larry was, was really writing about, was mm. the, the, that was the whole thing. Yeah. So. And Glenn Milne, he was on the, the TV for, for decades. Uh, he, did, he didn't even get fired when he pushed Stephen Milne off the stage when he was drunk at the, <laughs> at the Walkley Awards. But mm -hmm. after that, uh, Gillard phoned up, who was it, Chris Mitchell at the time? And yeah, Glenn, Glenn yeah. Milne, he hasn't been heard of yeah, again. Yeah. Like, <laughs> none of us have heard from about mm, him yeah. since then. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Larry, Larry Pickering was one of the guys who inspired me to start XYZ as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, he, he was something, Larry. He, he, yeah. he was like they broke the mold. When, you yeah. Know, I mean, I'm, I'm not. He, he wasn't perfect by by any stretch of the imagination, but what a character, you know. I mean, he was he was, he was yeah, he was quite incredible. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, I will wrap it up uh, now. So richardsonpost.com. Yeah. So if you go to the richardsonpost.com, you find lots of articles there, and um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. Mm. And we're we're all cross posting now these days. Yeah, we are. Because <laughs> the Australian alt media scene, we're all coming together. Obviously, uh, unshackled.net is where you can find uh, our uh, written content and, and show notes. I now have my own website, uh, timwilms.com. Cool. And everybody bypass Facebook, just come straight to the XYZ, xyz.net.au. Mm. Yeah. And, 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 and James. And James. Uh, and for the uh, archives of all our broadcasts, rationalrise.tv. Uh, hopefully, if we grow the thing enough, we'll uh, be live streaming directly there down the line. But for now, um, yeah, all of us are coming together for the video stuff. So when we eventually get um, cold from YouTube, you will be able to find us there. No problems at rationalrise.tv. It's, it's our nuclear uh, proof platform that if we get nuked by all the social media, yeah, um, it's our bunker. Yeah. Do you also want to talk about Champions of Light? Yes, yes. So we, we also, um, I've recently launched a new social network called Champions of the Light. Uh, and, you know, it's a largely Christian focus, but uh, at least the mission is Christian. But we are welcoming our non-believing brothers and sisters. It's a place where we can go to celebrate and uh, share our interest in the history, the rich history and heritage of the European peoples. 
So uh, that's that's essentially what it's about. And we've we've just launched it in the last week or so, and it's already uh, you know top shelf conversations. Great people in there. You can apply to join. Um, you know, we we will. We've got a great team of moderators. Uh, Tim uh, being one of them, alongside me and some others. And uh, basically, it's a safe space where we're going to kick out the gammas and the trolls and, yeah, no uh, free and the lefties. Yeah, not and a free speech zone. <laughs> not a free speech zone, no, uh, because no, nowhere really is anyway. Uh, you know, all of these uh, tech giants are, are geared to the left and uh, our platform is geared to the right. And, uh, and we're certainly wanting to promote Christian values and uh, civilizational uh, ideas and conversations. Um, we invite debate and discussion, of course. It's really just about having a, um, a respectful discourse uh, between the, the many uh, sub-factions of the grassroots right and uh, Christian um, world where we can come together. So it's, uh, yeah, it's going really well so far and it's free to join, it'll always be free. Uh, as far as function, it's, it's, it's like Facebook uh, without all the, all the bullshit. So uh, yeah, come along, championsofthelight.com. All right, and you've got your show, James Talk Seconds Show, right up on after this. So we'll let you have a well, uh, a few minutes break, and yeah, we'll all tune in to, to your show. So thank you, everyone, for watching. I think uh, in the comments tonight, uh, Colin uh, Col <laughs> uh, Col uh, Colin so gets the the award for, for basically the best. Best comments throughout the whole yeah, night. Yeah, he, yes. Uh, I yeah. lost well it. Well done, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good good few lols in there. Yeah. All right, good night. Thank you, everybody. All right, thank you. Good night.